So I went from living in a household of the organizers of BLM to seeing a black guy who doesn't believe in BLM. So I've definitely recently had a very interesting shift in my social circles. Um, pretty much almost overnight, it changed from being lefty liberal type of people to libertarian conservative type people. And for a, a year or two now, um, my social justice was becoming more nuanced. But more recently, I've just um, been in a, a rabbit hole of seeing the other side. And this has informed my politics and it's ever evolving. And so today we're talking about so some of the shadow aspects of social justice and in general, the shadow of rescuing yourself through rescuing others. So if you followed me for a while, you know that I talk a lot about inner child work. And when we're operating unaware of our wounded inner child, this will often show up as projection. And this can come in like an infinite amount of ways, but one of the most common ways is being a warrior for the underdog. So this can look like, you know, fighting for, you know, what you see as marginalized populations being, you know, so the thing is, it's like, there's a, that's a very noble thing. But if there's a shadow of you're actually rescuing your inner child through your social justice work or just through your focus on the underdog, then what, ha what can happen is that um, that energy of childhood wounding will show up in your activist work or your um, your under your underdog work, right? It doesn't necessarily be social justice related. Um, that often comes with like helping professions, right? It's like you're giving people the thing that you didn't get for yourself and you, you're getting it through like this um, third party kind of fashion. So I think this is a really important shadow to be aware of because I think this is, this plays a role in a lot of the shadow aspects of social justice culture that, you know, people have been speaking out about over the past couple of years. And, you know, because pretty much all of us are disassociated to some extent, unless we live in like an intact embodied culture, we don't know how to notice um, energy from form. I've talked about this in my internalized racism and whiteness workshop, but oftentimes, you know, we stand for social justice principles, but because we can't, we, but because we're living in our head and we don't notice like the energy of something, we may be playing out in ways that are just as oppressive because that's the way trauma works, right? Victim becomes oppressor, victim becomes victimizer, oppressed becomes oppressor, right? It's the cycle of abuse, but on a macro scale. And we see this in social justice communities where, you know, people get canceled for you know, some kind of thing, and there's a lack of a due process, and it becomes just as oppressive as, you know, um, the, the carceral state, right? So I do see this playing out in the, in the, in the worldwide stage right now. People are not, but because uh, an oppression is not, you know, listed in an intersectionality, intersectionality 101 textbook, they're not seeing it um, like totalitarianism and oppressive and oppression and discrimination in, that, in this new kind of form, this new paradigm, right? And it's easy to d dismiss because it doesn't fit into intersectionality 101, but if you're able to tune into the energy of it, it's the exact same as previous um, events in history. So, and this is something I've been learning is that, you know, there is a negative agenda at play that plays a hand uh, in a lot of our world's workings. And a part of what they do is they play both sides. So they are part of the people who, you know, like who are cutting down the trees, but they're also the ones using climate change for nefarious purposes. They use positive um, causes and they have negative, secret negative agendas for these positive causes. They're the ones, you know, oppressing people of color, but they're also the ones using um, social justice movements to divide people and to enact like that same power over power under dynamic, but within social justice circles. This is something I'll speak to you more about, but I think it's very important to be aware that these things are very nuanced and you need to be able to look beyond rhetoric 
and tune into the energy of something and do your inner child work and your shadow work and your um just your inner healing otherwise you know your activist work may become trauma bonding and perpetuating the cycle cycles so that's it for me and i'll catch you for the next video happy 2022 this is going to be a huge year um yeah we're in a really really um paradigm shifting time and i'll speak to more about why this time is like is very special for humanity so i'll see you at the next video bye